Alrighty, folks, you know I'm feeling great on a Wednesday morning because we're now 3-0 and in our last three chairman package picks on my premium site, 7-1 and in our last eight in that same category. And the good news is we have another chairman package play going off here this evening, and I'll get to more of that in just a second. But before we go ahead and move on, just want to take a quick time out and welcome you to my NBA free pick video here today for Wednesday, February 28th. 2024. Happy Wednesday to you. Happy hump day to you. Weekend's right around the corner. We are halfway there. Uh, hopefully you're having a great week thus far. And of course, my name is Brock Page. I've been dishing out free sports picks right here on YouTube since 2016. And if you want to see which one of these free picks on this video that I actually like the best, you may want to think about signing up for my full access, all-inclusive chairman membership. Now, Chairman members get access to every single premium selection of mine, every single package, every single day for the next 30 days. And as an added bonus, you're also going to get access to my Chairman podcast absolutely free. It's going to be included with your purchase. And once again, as I indicated earlier in the video, we are 3-0 and in our last three Chairman package picks in that membership alone, 7-1 and in our last eight in that same category. The site is patreon.com slash Brock Page. And with that, folks, we're going to dive right into some free content. We're going to start off with the Mavericks at the Raptors, 7.30 Eastern tip-off. Dallas is minus three, totals 238 and a half. Now, the Mavs got the W in seven out of their last nine. And they covered the point spread in all of those contests except for two. Now, the Mavericks have also had some success. Uh, they've had some sustained success against the Eastern Conference. They're 6-3 and three straight up in their last nine out-of-conference road games. And aside from being a top-10 point-producing team, the Mavs are a legit deep ball threat. They're making nearly 16 three-pointers a game. They're actually in the top three in the country in the... Uh, in the <laughs> I'm thinking college basketball. Not in the country, not in the nation, in the league. They play in a league. Uh, let's try that again. Uh, the Mavs, they are making nearly 16 three-pointers a game. They're in the top three in the association in that particular category. Kyrie Irving, he drills 42% of his deep balls, second on the roster in scoring. And, of course, Luka Doncic, he averages a league-high 34.5 points a game. And they're taking on a Raptors club on the other side who does struggle a bit on defense themselves. Their opponents are making nearly 50% of their field goals against them. They're in the bottom 10 in that particular category. Meanwhile, on the offensive end of the court, well, the Raptors have just been uh, terrible shooting from the strike. They have the second lowest free throw percentage in the entire NBA. Go ahead and hack them. Put them to the line because they will not make you pay. Now, injury-wise, Pirtle and Olenek are questionable for the Raptors. Uh, Dante Exum, day-to-day -day for the Mavs. Dallas did see overs recently against the likes of Cleveland, OKC, and New York. Meanwhile, Toronto saw three out of their last four get over the number themselves. Give me the Mavericks minus three over 240. All right, next matchup, Pelicans Pacers, 730 Eastern tip-off. Indiana's minus six at home, totals 239 and a hook. And even though they are favored in this spot here, the Pacers are one of the worst defensive teams in the game. These guys are allowing their opponents to make 51% of their field goals against them. That's obviously a, a league worse. Uh, the Pacers also have had some difficulties with Western Conference opponents. They've got a 400 win percentage in their out-of-conference ball games. They're also covering the number in just 36% of their out-of-conference home games. And they're taking on a Pels team who got the W in seven out of their last 10 themselves. They actually beat New York by 23 points just last night. And they had a couple guys banged up. And as good as the Pacers are, are at uh, scoring points, well, it's this Pelicans defensive effort who could be tough to shoot against here tonight because they're actually the toughest team to shoot three-pointers against in the entire NBA. New Orleans currently has the lowest defensive three-point percentage in the league. 
Now, Herbert Jones leads the active roster in steals per contest. Jonas Valanciunas, he is the most blocks and rebounds. That's Jonas Valanciunas. Uh, now, injury-wise, McCollum and Ingram are both battling ankle injuries. Keep an eye on them. But uh, with that in mind, like I said, uh, the Pels took care of a solid New York team handily just last night with guys hurt. Now, for the Pacers on the other side, Dougie McDermott, he's been scratched for them. Aaron Neesmith is questionable as well. Uh, the Pacers saw overs recently against the likes of Toronto and Houston. And out of 31 contests this year in the Gainbridge Fieldhouse, the over cashed in 65% of those home games. Meanwhile, four out of New Orleans, the last seven out-of-conference road games got over the line. Give me New Orleans plus six over 239 and a half. Next game, Cavs, Bulls, 8 o'clock Eastern start time. Cleveland's minus four, totals 216 and a half. Now, the Cavs got the W in seven out of their last 10. And uh, I tell you, they've been outstanding on the road this year. Cleveland's got a 667 win percentage in their travels. And they've allowed just 107 points per contest in those games. Uh, that's nearly a league best. But uh, what is a league best is their defensive field goal percentage on the road. These guys have the lowest defensive field goal percentage away from home in the league. Donovan Mitchell, he's the club leader in steals per game. Evan Mobley averages the most blocks per contest himself. And when it comes to grabbing rebounds, both Mobley and Jared Allen, they're both averaging double-digit boards per game, respectively. And they're facing a Chicago squad who lost three out of their last four. And uh, they just don't score well at all especially early. The Bulls are in the bottom three in first half scoring. When it comes to shooting a long ball, well, uh, they've been a little threat doing that as well. The Bulls are a bottom five, three-point making team in the East. And out of 11 games against divisional opponents this year, the Bulls lost all of them except for three. Now, Chicago saw three out of their last four outings stay under the total. They're also 13-4 and four to the under against the East at home. Meanwhile, Cleveland's gone 63% to the under as the road team. Give me the Cavaliers minus four under 216 and a half. Next ball game, Grizzlies, T-Wolves, 8 o'clock Eastern start time. Minnesota's minus 12 and a half, totals 212. And the Red Hot T-Wolves continue to roll. They got the W in six out of their last seven, and they've been tough to take down in the target center this year. These guys are 21-6 and six in their own building, and they are the toughest team to shoot against in the league. Minnesota has the lowest defensive field goal percentage in the entire NBA, and in turn, they also allow fewer points per contest than any other team in the league as well. Anthony Edwards leads the roster in steals per contest. Rudy Gobert has got the most blocks. And uh, that's certainly bad news for the Memphis Grizzlies. These guys are the lowest point-producing team in the entire NBA. They're dead last in field goals made per contest as well. And out of Memphis's last 10 ball games, they took the loss in all of those contests except for two. Now, injury-wise, Kennard, Clark, Bain, and Pippen are out. Uh, John Concher is doubtful. Meanwhile, for Minnesota... Anderson and Towns are questionable. Jalen Clark still inactive. When it comes to the total, the T-Wolves' last three straight fell under the total, 18-9 to the under in the target center. Meanwhile, Memphis saw unders in four out of their last five themselves. Give me Minnesota, minus 12 and a half, under 212. Next matchup, Kings, Nuggets, 9 o'clock Eastern tip-off. Denver's minus eight, totals 229. And as good as, the, uh, as good as the Nuggets are at home, they have had their issues covering the number. Denver failed to cover in five out of their last nine. And out of 18 home games against their in-conference opponents, Denver covered the number in just 38% of those games. And even though there is not much to nitpick about when it comes to Denver, don't get me wrong, this is a really good basketball team. But there are just a few areas uh, of concern that can be troubling. Uh, for one, well, these guys really haven't been a massive deep ball threat. They're actually in the bottom three in the West 
and three-pointers made per game. And for some reason, the Nuggets tend to shut things down late. They're in the bottom five in the entire league in fourth quarter scoring. Now, they're facing a Kings team who does a nice job of rebounding on D. Uh, they're actually a top 10 defensive rebounding team in the league. And most of that is thanks to the um, best rebounder in the league, Damanis Sabonis. He's averaging a league best 13.2 boards per game. Now, Boney's also shooting 42% from three land. Meanwhile, Harrison Barnes and Trey Lyles, they're knocking down 40% of their attempts from downtown. Now, injury-wise, De'Aaron Fox is battling a sore knee. Keep an eye on him. Meanwhile, for Denver, Hunter Tyson's day-to-day -day with a finger. Now, the Nuggets saw unders in six out of their last 10. They also went 64% to the under in their in-conference home games. Now, Sacramento on the other side, they've gone 65% to the under in all of their contests away from the Golden 1 Center. Give me Sacramento plus 8, under 229. And with that, folks, we're going to dive into our next and final breakdown for the video. It's going to be in that Lakers-Clippers game, 10 o'clock Eastern start time. The LA Clippers are minus 3, totals 235 and a half. Now, the sharpshooting Clippers have been dangerous from beyond the arc this season. These guys have the second highest three-point percentage in the entire NBA. And it should come as no surprise. The Clippers' top four scorers, they're all drilling 40% of their three balls, respectively. And they're facing a Laker club here today who doesn't defend the three-pointer all too well themselves. These guys allow nearly 15 made three balls a game. They're in the bottom three in that particular category. And for some reason, the Lakers have been... Real slow starters on defense early in games. The Lakers are giving up more first quarter points than any other roster in the league right now. Now, injury-wise, LeBron James is questionable with an ankle. Wood, Vanderbilt, and Vincent still out. Meanwhile, for the Clippers on the other, uh, other side, Paul George has been scratched with a knee. The Clippers did see overs recently against the likes of OKC, Golden State, and Atlanta. They also saw overs in six out of their last 10 meetings with the Lakers. So if you're into historical trends, plenty of overs to go around. Now, the Lakers on the other side, they saw overs recently against the likes of the Spurs, Jazz, and Pelicans. Give me the Clippers, minus three, over 235. And with that, folks, now it is time for our quick pick recap. Give me Dallas, minus three, over 240. Pelicans, plus six, over 239 and a half. I'm 3-0 in my last three chairman package picks on my premium site. 7-1 of my last eight in that same category. And if you want to see which one of these free plays on this video that I actually like the best, you may want to think about signing up for that chairman package here this evening. Uh, the link for that site is in my bio. Cavaliers minus four, under 216 and a half. T-Wolves minus 12 and a half, under 212. Sacramento Kings plus eight, under 229. Give me the Clippers, minus three, over 235. With that, folks, that's going to do it for me. Don't forget to check me out on my premium site. And just one final friendly reminder, if you sign up for a membership here today on patreon.com slash Brock Page, you're going to get access to that membership every single day for the next 30 days. And as an added bonus, uh, you're also going to get access to all of my cheaper memberships absolutely free. They're going to be included with your purchase. That's why I always tell folks that chairman package, it's a full access, all-inclusive membership. Gives you access to every single premium selection of mine, every single package, every single day for the next 30 days. And uh, as an added bonus, you also get access to my chairman podcast, absolutely free. It's included with your purchase. But most importantly, guys, got to thank you for joining me right here on the free video. Really hope you enjoyed all this great free content, all this great free information. And with that said, folks, happy Wednesday to you. Happy hump day to you. And I look forward to seeing you later on today on my premium site at patreon.com slash Brock Page.